I'm out here on Division Street. Those of you familiar with Division Street may know the book by the same title by Studs Terkel, Division Street. In that magnificent book, Studs told us about a wide range of people, not necessarily associated with Division Street, but regular people who told us the story of Chicago and America. Today here at the corner of Milwaukee, Ashland and Division, you can find people from all walks of life. Folks coming from the grocery store, waiting for the Division Street bus. Maybe they're crossing the street on their way to someplace else. Maybe it's home, maybe it's work. In today's tour, we'll take you through some of the places that make Division Street so unique. We'll talk to you about the Chopin Theater, the Frankie Machine Garden, and the largest Puerto Rican flags you'll ever see. stand in front of the Nelson Ogren Fountain and the Polish Triangle, you might look south across Division Street. What's one of the first things you'll see? The Poltalanka restaurant. You step inside, you sit down at one of the Czech tablecloths, you look at a one-page menu, you might order some Polish sausage, maybe some pierogi, maybe some cabbage soup. You sit, you enjoy your meal, you pay your bill, cash only, let me remind you. You stand up and you move and make your way to the Chopin Theater. While the Chopin Theater may be quiet now, since the Derkaches restored it in the early 1990s, it has been host to thousands of different theatrical productions. If you've been in Chicago a while, you may have seen a marionette show there. If you're me, you may have seen three one acts by Tennessee Williams performed by the hypocrites. And undoubtedly, you've been there to see something special. Once again, these two places taken together constitute an important cultural landscape of this section of Division Street. Imagine you're a newly arrived Eastern European immigrant walking down Division Street in 1907, 1908 perhaps. You walk past Walcott Street, making your way west, and you look up, you see a sign for a bathhouse. It reminds you of home. Maybe a tradition shared with you and some friends back in the old country. You walk in and you find the banya or hot room. You spend a few hours there and you feel refreshed. The tradition lives on today in 2020 at the Red Square Bathhouse. It is Chicago's last remaining bathhouse. It's worth a stop if you're walking down Division. You might come and plan a half a day for yourself. Next, we're gonna walk on over to the Frankie Machine Garden and talk about this unique public space and the Chicago author Nelson Algren. I'm here on Northwood, just a few hundred feet away from Division Street. Standing in front of the Frankie Machine Garden, your first question might be, 
Max, who is Frankie Machine? Frankie Machine is the hero, if you can call him that, of Nelson Algren's novel, The Man with the Golden Arm. Max, who is Nelson Algren? Nelson Algren was one of the city's most celebrated chroniclers. Well, he's celebrated now. When many of his works came out depicting the demi monde of humanity on Division Street and other parts of the city, the mainstream literary establishment was shocked. The Chicago Tribune wrote unkind reviews of his works. And a group of concerned citizens wanted one of his early novels banned from the Chicago Public Library. He didn't grow up on Division Street. He actually grew up in the Albany Park neighborhood. But after graduating from the University of Illinois, he began a career as an author. He wrote and wrote and wrote. He worked from the Federal Writers Project. He wrote novels. He wrote short stories. He wrote for magazines. He enjoyed being out what we might now call, quote, regular people. It was one of his true joys. Many of the places he frequented were along Division Street, including the Polonia Bar, which is long gone. It makes sense that there is a Frankie Machine Garden. The Frankie Machine Garden is part of the Neighbor Space Initiative. With dozens of sites across the city of Chicago, it affords neighborhood residents the opportunity to reclaim these underutilized spaces. It's a truly wonderful initiative. Next. We're going to take you over to Hoyne, where we'll see one of my favorite murals in the entire city. It celebrates diversity, empowerment, and community activism. What's your favorite piece of public art? What's something that moves you to pause, to reflect, to consider? Maybe it's your own station in life. Maybe it's your place in this great city. Maybe it's the person you'd like to become. Certainly one of those pieces that always gives me pause is the mural I'm standing in front of right now here at the corner of Hoyne and Division. Together We Overcome was first painted in the early 70s by John Pittman Weber. Since that time, Weber has gone on to work on numerous public art projects around Chicago and the region. The work depicts the struggle for justice, housing rights, and equity among a range of groups, including Puerto Ricans, in the West Town neighborhood. As you draw close, you'll see a variety of arresting images. No section is more compelling and more vibrant than those pallbearers taking the coffin of Orlando Quintana, an activist who was tragically murdered in 1973. But as you make your way around the mural, you'll also see other moments that will give you pause. A conflict with knives, a group of activists carrying a sign to remind us that housing is a human right and other moments. Ones that you'll want to come and find and reflect upon. Certainly Chicago's public art tradition as embodying its murals is one of its strongest characteristics. Next we're going to head west on Division Street and look up to see two remarkable flags.
how would you choose to celebrate your community's diversity? Along this stretch of division, known as the Paseo Boricua, we have two remarkable items that are some of Chicago's greatest design works. I'm talking about the two Puerto Rican flags that grace Division Street, the one behind me here at Artesian, and another one further to the west at Mozart. Designed by Edward Windhurst and installed in 1995, these two remarkable structures were meant to last 500 years. Each of the flags is 55 feet high and weighs 50 tons. If you come at different times of day, you'll see different patterns emerge from the shadows that the tubes cast to the way that the flags look as you consider the surrounding buildings and other structures nearby. Near the base of each of the flags, you'll find tiny plazitas where people are encouraged to gather, sit, and meet their neighbors. It, truly, these are some of Chicago's most stunning public designs and a celebration of the Puerto Rican community and their various contributions to the city's cultural and economic life. Next, we're gonna head on over to the Near North Branch Library where we'll talk with Steve Musgrave about some of his remarkable portraits. Hi everyone, I'm here with Steve Musgrave at the Near North Branch Library and we're talking today about some of the portraits he's created to celebrate different Illinois authors. Steve, thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you, thanks for asking me. And if you could for our listeners, could you tell us a little bit about your background and how you came to do these portraits? Um, I am an illustrator. I've been working as an illustrator, freelance illustrator in Chicago since uh, 1980 and uh, at some point I was doing a lot of digital work and I kind of got burned out on it and started doing paintings. I mean there were paintings that still were stylized, they weren't very painterly in, the, in a traditional painting style but um, since, but uh, I started doing a lot of portraits of some of my heroes and a lot of baseball players and different characters and I did a, a painting of Franklin and Eleanor Roosevelt that someone in the Department of Public Art saw and was interested in using me for this project. And Craig Davis, the, who was then the, uh, here at this library, um, wanted me to work on this series of portraits of Illinois writers based on, basically based on that portrait. Could you tell us a little bit about some of the process that was involved as you assembled? I mean, they're rich with such detail. Um, and if folks definitely come back and visit the Near North Library and take a look at some of these wonderful details, tell us how you thought of some of the background images you well, find in these portraits. Yeah, I, um, Craig said that he wanted these to be teaching tools. So I thought as, to me that means as, as well as being representative of the uh, the figures that are depicted, um, it should look like them, but it should, the um, pictures also tell, uh, have elements in the background that tell a story about who that person is and the kind of work they did. Um, and so I had to do a lot of research. Um, so basically for about a year, I would be working on one painting and uh, during the day and then researching the next one at night. So uh, just because I wanted them to have that depth and tell the story about the, the character or the individuals. So yeah, it was a lot of, I learned a lot. I learned a ton about you know, Chicago and Illinois, particularly Chicago history. Um, so that was a real nice, you know, it was nice for me to learn all that. Oh, thank you. <laughs> and I think next we're going to take a look at a couple of the paintings and have Steve tell us a little bit more about some of the details in each one. We're back here with Steve Musgrave, everyone, talking about these amazing portraits he created for the Near North Branch of the Chicago Public Library. He's going to tell us a little bit about 
his portrait of Richard Wright. Thanks, Steve. Sure. Um, I, this one, uh, I don't know, has a, I have a soft spot in my heart for it. I, I, it was the first one I did of the series, and I, I especially liked the device of him holding the book wrapped in the newspaper, because when he was a kid, he was, you know, he, he was born in rural Mississippi, and getting an education as a black kid was impossible and, and not looked upon in a, in a favorable way, so he kind of had to hide the fact that, but he, but he loved to read, and so he had to hide the fact that he was taking books from the library and he would he would wrap them in a newspaper he'd wrap them in some kind of packaging so they wouldn't be he wouldn't be seen as trying to improve himself and educate himself and i thought this being for the library what better you know statement about it's it's just a beautiful and heartbreaking statement um but and i also wrapped it in the um, defender which was the was critical in, in educating uh, blacks in the South about the and uh, in, in, in feeding into the northern migration at the time, which he was his family was participated in. They came up north from uh, Mississippi. So really, really wonderful. Thanks. Yeah. Thank you. And thank you for telling us about it. Friends, we've walked up and down Division today. We stopped at the Near North Branch Library. Steve Musgrave told us a little bit about his favorite portraits. Those people that he found from Illinois' literary history that truly inspired him. We heard about his love for Richard Wright. We took a long look upward at the Puerto Rican flags over on Division near Artesian. We stopped by and saw another mural. We've celebrated some of what makes this part of Chicago so miraculous. And you'll come back here, and you'll come see it on your own. As with all the other tours, I always like to leave us with a little haiku, something I've written after we've gone through together, we've filmed, we've talked to people along the way. And I'd like to read it for you now. Puerto Rican flags, walk, walk east, past the banya, is it? Pierogi. <laughs>